Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, like many of the marine chapters I've painted for the channel, I have already done salamanders a while ago now. <laughs> Quite a while, actually. And in that time, there's been two editions of 40k, and uh, Primaris Marines happened at all, so it's time to update it. Now, there are one or two things that I've learned since then which will make this much quicker. And as a speed painting method, I think the end result here is pretty cool. There's one or two bits that you can even skip, and I will call those out specifically as they show up. And I'm also going to show you how I've done this really easy muzzle burn on the flamer. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description, same as always. Let's get started. So the same as any other miniature, once you've assembled them, the first thing to do is to prime them. Now I've done this in two steps, using a method you'll sometimes hear referred to as zenithal priming. First of all, I turned them upside down and sprayed them with black. I've used matte black from the army painter, though in that case, any black will do the job. And then what I've done is to stand them upright and from above, roughly a 45 degree angle, I've given them a couple of passes of green skin. And that one's from the army painter as well. Green skin is, to my mind, the perfect, absolutely perfect salamander's color. Uh, it's wonderful because it's just that right mid-tone green, nice and saturated. There isn't really a primer quite like it in the Citadel range, unfortunately. Um, anything else is going to be extra work. And the whole method here is to cut down as many steps as possible. If I can make this marine the right shade of green from the outset, perfect. Colored primers, if you can find them, are a godsend. Now our very first step painting might come as a surprise, but we're going to do his eyes. What I've got is Moon Dust from the Army Painter, and it's a wonderful light yellow. Um, it covers, like the Army Painter's bright colors cover much better than you would think they would. You'll see I'm not being terribly careful at all. I'm really just splatting in and hoping I hit the eye. <laughs> uh, reason being is we're going to be able to tidy this up later. Uh, so there's no point being, you know, spending lots of extra time here being super, super careful. Just blodge it in. And uh, make sure, once one coat has dried, just blast it with a second so you've got a nice bright yellow. Now if you want a red, you could use instead uh, Mars Red from Army Painter, or you could use Wild Rider Red. It is really up to you, but I'm using yellow because that's what I'm seeing on the, uh, on the product pages, basically. Alright, now we're going to carry on by painting from the inside out, meaning parts close to the marine, which I'm likely to make a mess of <laughs> later on. I'm going to do those now. So what I have is Retributor Armor, and I am going to paint in the Chest Eagle. You see I'm already making a dreadful mess, but I am more likely to come back and uh, hit the gun, as you see. So I want to be able to paint that as a next step, rather than having to keep come back and tidy it up. And now we can paint some of the other metalwork. What I have is Iron Hand Steel for this. And uh, what I'm using here, this is one of the synthetic brushes from Warlord Games. Um, I know the STC brushes from Citadel, they are also synthetics. I tend to like using these for big areas, like you'll see on the, uh, the flamer canister here that I'm jamming it, <laughs> really being quite violent with the brush. Uh, it just saves me having to muck about really carefully getting into the recesses and I don't worry about ruining a nicer brush. When it comes to painting the little dealy boppers on the sides of his helmet though, I will swap to a smaller brush, maybe something like a medium layer brush, and paint that in with a little bit more care. Now something unique to these Infernus guys is going to be the front of the flamer. What I'm using here is Balthazar Gold. And back to my little synthetic brush so that I can really just force a bit of paint into these gaps in the flamer casing, I guess? The nozzle. Now it will take a couple of coats to get a nice solid Balthazar Gold, but it is worth it. Now if you have the molded shoulder pads on these guys, rather than the transfers, what I'm going to do is lay down a couple of coats of Corax White on the dragon head first. Uh, now this here, Corax White, can be a bit of a tricky one, uh, but I do recommend pop a couple of agitators in there, and uh, a little bit of Lamian Medium will help this flow really well. I like Corax White quite a bit. I know some folks don't get on with it, but just a wee bit of prep work, and you'll have a great white. Now we're going to move on to the black parts. 
Now for this what I'm using, this is Vallejo Model Color Black, and the reason being is just how wonderfully it covers. Quick blast to this and you'll have a nice deep black. On some of the bigger flatter areas like the shoulder pads you may find you need to give it a second coat, uh, but for the most part it just covers gorgeously. So I do recommend if you're going to be painting a lot of salamanders try and get your hands on some of this. Now you might see that that model color dries more matte than the rest of the miniature that we've painted so far. Now if I wasn't going to varnish it that might be an issue but I'm going to varnish it which is going to bring back some of that satin finish. Now one thing to think about is how to paint the pack because some folks will paint this whole thing in black but what I'm going to do instead is to paint this top section and the covers on the little vents here in black because from the front I quite like how it frames the top of the marine. Uh, painting the whole thing in black would take a lot longer. Uh, you could even leave it green but it's up to you. Now we're getting somewhere. Now what I've got, this is one of my cheap little brushes. Uh, now I do recommend anytime you end up at the stationery aisle in your supermarket or drugstore, wherever it is you go, uh, you always find these really nasty cheap brushes and they are brilliant for all sorts of things. So what I've got it for is, well, dry brushing. Something I can absolutely beat thickens out of and it doesn't matter. So I have Fenrisian Grey, I'm just loading up my brush. And what I'm going to do is use this to very lightly, hang on, let's just, there we go. Always dry brush the edge of your base first. And I'm very lightly going to leave behind a bluish edge to some of the detail on the pack. If you go overboard with this, you see I might be adding just a little bit much there. And what you can do is go back to that black that we've just applied. It won't matter too much. Um, and you'll be quite surprised, you can leave some of these edges a little bit chalkier than you might expect. Because once we shade it, uh, this is all going to come together. But all the same, just to make this black section a little more interesting, away we go. Dry brush with some Fenrisian Grey. You might see some of my black tidy up still drying there. I've also added a little bit of that just to the edges of the gun, and that will work quite well. What I'm going to move on to is Black Grey from Vallejo. This is another model color. Um, it is basically Corvus Black. What I'm going to use this for is to paint in the undersuit. You can't just as easily here use the same black that you have for the armor. Uh, and this will dry much darker than it looks going on. It's going to look almost black. But it's a nice rubbery black, so it suits this quite well. I notice at this point that I actually haven't put any equipment pouches on them, but the uh, official guide, you know, the, the heavy metal look features black leather, so I've painted that in with black grey as well. Personally, I would probably lean towards something like Rhinox Hide. Um, a nice dark warm leather colour will look a little bit more interesting, uh, but I'm just using what I've got to hand. It's nice and quick that way. Now there is one last thing I want to do before I get to my tidy up stage, and that is to dry brush the green. Here I'm using Underhive Ash. Now Ogren Camo or Krieg Khaki will also work quite well if you happen to have those. And what I'm going to do is be quite sparing with this, because it's going to look awful going on. Now, the thing to bear in mind with these dry paints is that they do tend to settle down a little bit once they've had some time to dry. You can see I'm being quite gentle with it. Just catching edges of armor where I want a bit more definition. Now, using a yellowish color like Underhive Ash is going to work really well on this light green. And uh, when we shade this guy, it's going to come together quite nicely. So be a little bit more bold with this than you might think. And yeah, let's come back in a second once I've done that. The same as with the Fenrisian Grey, you want to be a little bit more daring with that than you might think. Um, I quite like adding a fair bit of that. You will find though with the dry paints you get a little bit of dust in some areas, which obviously it's made, <laughs> it's made to do. What I'm going to do is get a nice soft brush, like an archaeologist, and just brush that away. Now the last thing I'm going to do before shading the miniature is to grab some green skin from the Army Painter. Basically any time you have the primer spray, it's a good idea to pick up the colored bottle as well. So what I'm doing is to tidy up those bits of green that I mentioned earlier. 
take your time with this and be pretty careful uh, but anywhere that you've gone a little overboard with the dry brushing you can tidy up now uh, although like I said try not to get rid of some of the texture that you would have added and once you've finished with any cleanup that you want to do it's time to go ahead and shade him and what I'm going to use for this is an old Forge World army painting method called marine juice I don't know if they've ever called it marine juice it's just what I've always <laughs> found it easiest to refer to it as now this has been adjusted from the original recipe because non oil changed formulation fairly recently and it doesn't work quite the way as it used to so what this is is equal parts of Reichland flesh shade Blamian medium and dark tone from the army painter uh, what it's going to give us is a very deep reddish shade uh, which actually works super well for shading pretty much anything um, I use this as an almost universal shade and uh, as you'll see a deep purpley sort of color actually works super well over green what I'm going to do is shade our entire miniature in it and uh, once I've given him a real good bath <laughs> We'll come back in about half an hour once he's dried and uh, see what we get. And there we go. Once that's dried, I mean, that's ready to hit the table. You could base him up very quickly from here and call him done. But as always, we are going to take it just a little bit further. In particular, I want to tidy up the gun a little bit more, make that look a little bit more interesting, and maybe highlight the gold on his chest. Otherwise, that's come out pretty much exactly as I would have hoped. So... That's one quick way. Let's keep going. I'll start off with a little bit of neat dark tone just over this part of the weapon because I want this to be a little bit more pronounced. I think the shading here can be darker, look pretty good. And while that dries, what I'm going to take is some fresh Reichland flesh shade. And it won't matter if you're using the old or the new stuff here. Start about halfway up the weapon. And you'll see this gives us a really nice burnished, slightly burned finish. Uh, even over a color like Balthazar Gold, it still works to introduce a bit of reddish warmth here. Now you don't have to wait for that to dry completely before getting some more and adding another layer. Again, about halfway up the section that you've just painted. So you start getting this faded, grimier effect towards the tip. And then finally, here's that dark tone again. We'll come to about here and blob a nice dark scorched tip on this flamer. Now because we've shaded our base coats twice, uh, we can actually go back to Iron Hand Steel to use as a highlight. So just a little bit of this on some of the edges of the uh, silver parts of the weapon. But as well, you can also use it in little fine dips and dabs on the edges of the flamer to give this a really scorched edge. Now from there I'm going to add just a little bit of fresh Corax white on the chapter badge just to tidy this up. You don't have to do a huge amount of this just to get rid of some of the uh, grimy edges make it look a little bit sharper. Now the last thing I'm going to do I actually went back and added a little bit of Reichland flesh shade over the chest eagle I have here some Liberator Gold, and this is the first new color we're adding in a while. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just tickle along the upper edges of the eagle and any bits I can easily reach. You know, I don't want to uh, overdo things here. And once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do, hit him with a satin varnish. Uh, matte does photograph better, but I recommend with your Marines, satin usually gives it a nice shine. And then I'm going to pop a base on him. The recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he's all finished. And there at last, our Salamander's Infernus Marine is complete. And I had a lot of fun doing him, as I always seem to when it comes to Space Marines. <laughs> now, you can speed this method up even further. Like I mentioned, you can leave that backpack green. But I like the black detailing. I think it does add a fair bit to frame the top of the Marine and make that look pretty cool. As well, I have touched on painting flame stuff onto salamanders before. Uh, that was for a Horus Heresy video, and I'll link to that one in the description. I'd recommend, though, that you don't put that on every marine in your army, because it's going to take an awfully long time to do. And on top of that, it's a good way to mark out your special weapons or leaders, that sort of thing. 
Just remember as well, if you have got the decals for the shoulder pads, to apply those before you varnish the miniature. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including all of my wonderful producers who are showing up on screen now. Your support is really what keeps this ticking. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.